Hi everybody, it's Miss Kayla and I'm so glad to see you guys today. This month we are having a big block party and of course we're having lots of fun. I love having fun with my friends and I'm sure you do too. Man, aren't you glad that God created friendship? But what is friendship? Friendship is using our actions and our words to show others that we care. And I have an awesome story about friendship for you today. It's from the books of First and Second Kings in the Bible. And these books are all about the history of the kings that ruled over God's people after King David. You know, some of these kings did a great job and they followed God, but unfortunately a lot of them didn't. And it was really sad because the kingdom fell apart. But God still cared about his people. And so he sent people called prophets to speak his words to his people. One of these prophets was named Elijah. Let's watch this video to hear more about Elijah's life. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19. For many years, God's people were ruled by kings who refused to listen to God. So God sent prophets to speak his words. One was a man named Elijah. I serve the Lord. Elijah did amazing things through God's power, like calling for rain after three years of drought and uh, bringing a dead boy back to life. But being a prophet was a lonely, difficult life. After the evil queen Jezebel threatened his life, Elijah fled to Mount Horeb. God, I've been committed to you, but the people have turned their backs on me. I am the only prophet left. God already had an answer to Elijah's pleas. A friend. Go back the way you came. Anoint Elisha from Abel Meholah as the next prophet after you. So Elijah tightened his belt and set out along the road. When he finally reached the town, he noticed several young men plowing with a dozen pair of oxen. And in the very last field, he noticed one of the young men struggling to keep his oxen in line. Get up there, Ham. Move along, Burger. God, is that Elisha? He's just a small town kid. What does he have? Does he have what it takes to be a prophet? But God had chosen Elisha, so Elijah tramped through the muddy field to greet the young man. Elisha! Elisha blinked in surprise when he saw the prophet. Whoa, Burger! Elijah marched right up to Elisha and threw his very own cloak over the young man's shoulders. It was a sign that God had chosen Elisha to be Elijah's assistant. Me? You're choosing me? Elijah turned and walked away. Elisha dropped the reins and ran after. Wait, just let me say goodbye to my family. Then I'll come with you. Go right ahead. I'm not making you do anything. Yes, sir. Right then and there, Elisha broke apart his plow and used the wooden pieces to start a fire. He cooked a meal and called all his family and friends over to share it with him. I'm leaving to travel with Elijah. Goodbye, everyone. Then Elisha set out on the road beside Elijah. I don't really know how to be a prophet, or, or even a prophet's assistant. That's okay, you'll learn. So over the years, Elisha followed Elijah everywhere as a close companion and good friend, and he watched and listened intently as Elijah spoke God's words to powerful kings and, and did incredible things. One day, Elisha and Elijah left the town of Gilgal on the way to Bethel, and they both knew that God was about to do something very breathtaking. God was going to take Elijah up to heaven. Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. Elisha wasn't about to leave his friend to go it alone. As sure as the Lord and you are alive, I won't leave you. At Bethel, the same thing happened. Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. As sure as the Lord and you are alive, I won't leave you. It happened once again in Jericho. Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to the Jordan River. As sure as the Lord and you are alive, I won't leave you. 
You do realize you're repeating yourself. Together, Elisha and Elijah reached the banks of the Jordan River. The waters flowed dark and deep. Elijah removed his coat and rolled it up. And then he struck the river. Immediately, the waters parted to the right and left. Elisha and Elijah walked across the river on dry ground. They reached the opposite bank. Tell me, what can I do for you before I'm taken away? <sighs> Elisha didn't want to lose his friend and mentor, Elijah, but he'd learned many things in the last few years. Please, give me a double share of the spirit God has given you. Only the Lord can do that. But if you see me when I'm taken away, that means you will receive what you've asked for. Elisha nodded, and the two men walked on in silence. Suddenly, a wild wind whipped up, and a chariot and horses appeared, blazing with fire. Elijah. The flaming chariot flew down right between the two men. It caught up Elijah and carried him up to heaven, driven by a strong wind. Elijah, you are like a father to me. Elisha stared into the sky until the last breath of wind and the final hint of flame were gone. Then in great sorrow, he tore his own clothes. My best friend is gone. Glancing down at the ground, he saw Elijah's coat. Carefully, he picked it up. I wonder. Elisha hurried back to the bank of the Jordan River. Again, the water flowed hard and fast. On the opposite bank, a group of prophets from Jericho watched. Look, there's Elisha, but where's Elijah? Across the river, Elisha twisted up Elijah's coat. He called out in a loud voice. Where is the power of the Lord? Where is the power of the God of Elijah? Then Elisha struck the water just as Elijah had done. And just like what happened before, the waters parted to the right and left. The prophets from Jericho stared in amazement as Elisha crossed the river on dry land. The spirit God gave to Elijah has been given to Elisha. It was true. Elisha had been faithful to follow and learn from Elijah for many years, and now God's spirit was with Elisha just as it had been with his friend. When we encourage one another, we show the world what God's love looks like. And that's our bottom line this week. Friends encourage one another, just like Elijah and Elisha. So I want you to think, what does that look like for us today? How can we encourage each other, just like we saw Elijah and Elisha encourage each other in the video? Well, maybe your friend is really nervous about a big test at school or trying out for a sport or maybe performing in a piano recital. If they're nervous, you can encourage them. Tell them that you know that they can do it and maybe even help them practice. Or maybe your friend is sad and you can just sit there and you can talk with them and just listen. Or you could even make a card to cheer them up. There are so many ways that we can encourage one another when we're having hard times. It makes the world of difference when you know that your friend is right there to cheer you on. And remember this too, God helps us to encourage others. When we put our faith in Jesus, we receive the biggest helper that we can ever know, God's Holy Spirit. So when we trust in Jesus, we receive the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit helps us to know how we can encourage those around us. Isn't that cool? Parents, make sure that you check out the parent guides to go along with this week's video. It was so good seeing you guys.